Welcome to this presentation about earned value management. And this is one of the first presentations I want to talk to you about earned value management. First of all, we have to see why do we need earned value management? What are the reasons? And in order to understand what happens once we have the project budgets, let's have a look at the S-curve or the cost curve of the project. Here on the graph you see the S-curve. Eh? We have the blue curve, the S-curve, which is basically the overview of the cost over the duration of the project. At the top we find the budget at completion. That's what we calculated, the amount we think the project will cost when it is completed. We have a little bit contingency reserve or it can be a lot more. So the basic budget of the project is the cost plus the contingency reserve and the contingency reserve is basically for taking into account risk events. Now we don't have the management reserve as a part of the budget. Why is that? Because management reserve is in fact there, it's reserved for things that are not included in the original scope of the project. So we can make a decision to add it to the scope, but originally it's not part of the project as such and it's not part of the budget, of course. Now what we also have is that budgets are typically allocated over different periods. Once a project is approved, there is also a budget that will be approved for separate parts of the project. So for example, the first budget here is approved for the first part of the work. By the time we reach the end of that budgeting period, we get more budget and so on until we finish the project. These are things which are quite important. And what we are going to look at now is to see what happens at a certain amount and what are our conclusions or what can be in fact a problem with the information that we have. I added some extra information to this graph which means that we have here at a certain moment T1 we are looking at the project at the time T1 so we already finished a certain part of the work and we we'll want to see what's happening. And I put there the actual cost, the money spent, the expenditure of the project at this moment. And we have one and two, I put them in green. We are on target, we are below budget, and typically this is interpreted as something good. We are spending less or not more money than we planned. Point three is above that curve and is typically considered to be bad because we are overspending. Now, but it's still good, we are below the green curve, so we still have budget available. We can keep on working on the project as long as the funds are reserved and we can pay our employees and we can pay the people working on the project. Point four is the same thing, we are above the budget but we are also above the let's say the blue curve we are spending more than what we uh, expected on the other hand we exceeded our budget and of course from that moment there is no more funding the work has to be stopped i had that a few times in uh, at and we were working on a project everything seemed okay and suddenly they told us you have to stop working your budget for this project has been exhausted and it may be sometimes frustrating. Now what do these numbers mean? Typically one and two people will interpret that it's very good because we're spending not more than planned. In one we spent less than planned. Now is that good? In the classical evaluation we look at the schedule situation in the Gantt chart and we look at the cost here, but we don't link them. Now here, typically people will be congratulating the project manager, you're doing a great job, everything is fantastic. 4.2, well, you're doing a normal job, you're on budget, so that's also not bad. 
Unfortunately, what happened is that in the experiences of many project managers, they've seen that although they got a very good result here, intermediate result, like 4.1, it doesn't mean that the project will really finish below budget. And that's a point which is a little bit crazy for the project manager because everybody is happy, we continue working the way we work, and then finally when the project is finished, the team notices that the project is late and that we are over budget. Being over budget may be a very important element because it can lead to a bad business case. Imagine that with the whole situation you don't make money anymore, basically you're creating a project that will be at a loss and we don't want to do that. Now, just with this information, we cannot interpret exactly what it means. Is point one good? Is point two good? Point three or point four? Imagine that you're performing better, you're making more deliverables. Then the S-curve will move to the left. It will be steeper and we will be spending money faster. That's of course a thing which is positive, but budget-wise we see this as something negative because I'm spending more money than I planned. On the other hand, here for point one, it may be that we are spending less money because we are having delays. Our schedule is not evolving the way we thought. Just with this information, it's not possible to do something about that. It's not possible to understand these things. And that's why project managers have introduced the concept of earned value management. Earned value management will help us to interpret these numbers exactly what they are and provide the relevant information to the people who are responsible for the project financing. We will look at that in the next presentations. I will go through all the different steps of earned value management and at the end you will understand how important earned value management is in fact in project management these days. We will see it in the next presentation, so I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Bye-bye and thank you.